Empower Radio presents Out of the Fog. Join intuitive guide and spiritual teacher Karen Hager for lively, positive conversation with light workers, healers, and dynamic wisdom keepers. Get ready for inspiration and connection. This is Out of the Fog on Empower Radio. Here's your host, Karen Hager. Hello and welcome to Out of the Fog. I'm Karen Hager. Each week at this time, we gather for spiritual conversation with enlightening guests, and I'm glad you're here. My guests today say that healing isn't about something that's missing or wrong or broken in you. They say that healing is an awakening to your wholeness and your choices to live and live well, no matter what the circumstances are. The Reverend Linda Martella Witset and Alicia Witset are here today to offer some tools for discovering the power of your mind so that you can claim your wholeness and heal your life. Are you ready to meet them? The Reverend Linda Martella Witset is a unity minister and spiritual teacher. She's the author of How to Pray Without Talking to God, Divine Audacity, and her new book, This Life is Yours. Linda is the vice president of Unity Prayer Ministry, including Silent Unity, Unity's 24-7 worldwide prayer ministry. And Alicia Whitsett, who's the co-author of This Life is Yours, is a lifelong student of Unity Teachings. Motivated by her own struggles with identity, illness, and grief, Alicia has dedicated the last five years to spiritual growth and holistic healing on her own terms. She's based in Kansas City, Missouri, where she supports individuals with developmental disabilities through the Department of Mental Health. You can find out more about Linda, about Alicia, and about their new book, This Life is Yours, at youaredivine.com. That's the letter U, the letter R, hyphen, divine.com. Youaredivine.com. Linda and Alicia, welcome to Out of the Fog. It's our joy to be here with you. Thank you to all the listeners for tuning in. Thank you, Karen. We're so happy to be here. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be with you guys. So Linda, what prompted you to write this book and why on earth? earth did you write it together? Because you're family, aren't you? We are. We're mother. I'm the mother. Alicia's <laughs> the daughter. <laughs> I had written two previous books, as you mentioned. Uh, my publisher had been asking me for quite a while to think about what a third book might look like. Uh, for me, the topic of healing is a big one for the discipline that I follow. The un- unity movement is founded in healing. Uh, and I really wanted to explore that more, not only for uh, for teaching it, but for my own life, right? To be able to to um, you know to get beyond some of what I would see as meta- metaphysical abuse that I could see um, in in having people feel really badly about having caused themselves the conditions that they're feeling. So I really wanted a new paradigm. So I sat one day and was just talking out loud to Alicia about, you know, I was feeling enthusiastic, starting to have themes emerge and topics and all of that. And then I saw Alicia's face and she was sitting on the (laughs) edge of her seat. Alicia, take it from here. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I'm just reliving that moment every time I still, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat right now because it was like, I was just, you know, bursting at the seams. Like I had so many ideas flowing through me at that moment because to take you back just even a few months prior to that I was coming through a really dark period of chronic illness and and major depression where I was feeling the sunshine in my life for the first time in in months you know and and realizing that this is the first time in my life that I could separate the conditions that had haunted me since I was a little girl from my wholeness. It was an awakening to wholeness for me. So I had so much to say. And she turned to me and said, do you want to write this book with me? (laughs) And I I first thought she was kidding. And then I turned to her and I said, I do. I do want to write this book. And did you get along as you did this? Well, also yes. for myself as mom, we really, we really learned so much about each other, uh, you know, beyond our typical, you know, relationship. Uh, we learned how to be partners in this work together. 
And we learned, and Alicia will tell you how very, very differently we approach our work, Mm -hmm. our writing, our styles, all, all of that. And what a dance it was for two and a half years of writing and editing to be able to really give each other sacred space to really do it your way and to learn how can I harmonize with that? How can I, you know, how can I give Alicia the total freedom to be creative in her own way? And how can I be sure that my voice doesn't get lost in that? and vice versa. Right, Alicia? Right, right. We, we balance each other out very well. And I think in recent years, we do that anyway in our, our personal relationship. Um, we've had more open and honest discussions with making sure both of our needs get met. But it was really cool to see that cross into a professional working relationship. It sounds like a healing to me. Yeah, which is why, uh, which is kind of why I'm asking the question, because it sounds like a healing, Um, not that there was something wrong before, but that it breathes space and potential and different way of seeing each other into that relationship. Beautiful. Yes, definitely a lot of healing. Mm. Mm. So, Alicia, in the book, when you talk about healing, you're not talking about curing a specific condition, right? Like, ding, oh, I won, I'm healed, and now I'll go on and do something else. So what does healing mean to you in the context in which you use it in the book? Right. So so healing is it's not about curing a condition. It's 100% about curing the state of mind, curing how you see yourself through that condition or separate from that condition. That, that was a big one for me. So um, healing is not a destination. It's not a place that you can get to and there's no end point. So we, we often hear healing referred to as my healing journey. And, and that always paints the picture of, of you're traveling somewhere. You're, you're trying to, to get to the end of it, trying to get through it. And that just never, that never, sat well with me because I was sitting there with this illness in my body that there would be moments that I was perfectly fine and other times where I was completely debilitated. And how do you work with that? How do you come to terms with that? The only way you can come to terms with that is by understanding that you're whole separate from that condition. That's the only way. So this, this was a breakthrough for me to understand that it doesn't hold me back to, to not feel well, but what holds me back is, it's hard to put that into words, mom. I might need you to help me with that. <laughs> what holds us back is our construct that if, yes. there's, if there's a symptom, if there's something that isn't finished, doesn't feel resolved, that, that I'm broken. Yes. That I, I can't succeed. Yes. So what then does, so what does wholeness mean? Is that that idea that there's, hmm, maybe there's something in me that is, that is good, that is unbroken, and that I can live in that unbrokenness even when my body hurts or I did it wrong or I fell over or knocked over, the th- whatever that is? Right, right. Because you, you're never separate from the state of wholeness. Wholeness is, is what you came into this being as. So, so the healing, healing is not the return to wholeness. Wholeness is what you always are. It's yes. what you always were. Yes. Yes. And, you know, you can understand, a reader could understand it as simply as that I have a whole life right? That this that is happening is only one aspect. And if I put it in its right place, it's not the dominant aspect of my life. There's so much more to my life. So anyone who wants to look at it just from that frame of mind can really get what we're talking about. But you're, you're really alluded to this, Karen. This is a <laughs> principle. Wholeness is a spiritual principle. It means that we're not only human. Any single one of us, we have had moments in our life of pure 
um, mysticism, of a mystical reality, a breakthrough awareness that I'm a part of something much greater than this physicality. And that is wholeness. I'm one with all that is, and that that includes everything and every atmosphere. One of the things I like about the book is that there are so many practical exercises in it. And that suggests to me, I love what you just said, Linda, and it having all those exercises and things reminds me that just like I don't get to healing and then we'll oh, check it off, I'm healed and go scampering away. My realization of my own wholeness can happen again and again and again through exercises and disciplines and practice and through me wandering away from it and coming back. I can have that what to me, at least as, as speaking as Karen, is a, a joyful remembering, remembering of my own wholeness again and again and again. It's not just one and done. Yes. Yes. That's the key, isn't it? That's mm-hmm. the key. Uh, I like to say enlightenment is not permanent, <laughs> right? It's in, in a moment, I could be totally enlightened. The next moment, I could forget all about that. So it is the, the practice, practice, practice that gets us more often in that state than not. What practices have been most helpful? And Alicia, you were talking about going through a period of chronic illness and sort of darkness. And what practices have been especially helpful to you? Oh, wow. Um, So many. Well, (laughs) I, I like humor. I laugh a lot. I laugh at myself a lot. I like to keep things light and positive and not as a way to deflect as to what's really going on with me, but as a way to just remember that, my goodness, you don't need to take yourself so seriously, you know? Um, But I do a lot of mindfulness techniques. I like to remember where I am, stay grounded, whether that's meditation or whether that's just being in a silent room and focusing on what's directly in front of me, what's below me, staying grounded. That's what really works for me. And in water, nature, uh, I know we're not going out much right now, but (laughs) you can go outside and, and be away from others in nature and nothing nothing like that. It's just magical. Well, and you can have that experience of water by washing your hands or by mindfully Uh taking a drink of water and feeling it moving down your throat. You can have an experience every bit as powerful with water doing that as you could if you went and stood on the cliff and looked over the ocean. It's just that the ocean is more fun right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're really speaking to um, something that we do write about when we we have an entire alphabet of potential spiritual practices uh, that just require 15 minutes of engagement each day, which helps, of course, to change our brain chemistry and our physical chemistry, our body's chemistry um, that really stimulates the feel good and helpful hormones in our bodies. And one of those is about earthing, right? This, mm-hmm. this idea of earthing. And we also say what you just said, Karen, if you can't get outside, bring the outdoors in, bring a rock and a feather in or symbols that, that represent for you, the earth, the sky, the water, right? And, uh, and, and, you know, no excuses. In other words, there's a way. <laughs> You're listening to Out of the Fog, and I'm talking with Linda Martella Whitsett and Alicia Whitsett. Together, they've created this new book, This Life is Yours, Discover Your Power, Claim Your Wholeness, and Heal Your Life. You can find out more about Linda and Alicia and their work at ur-divine.com. That's the letter U, the letter R, hyphen, divine.com, ur-divine.com. So since we're talking about spiritual practices, I'd like to talk a little bit, if it's okay, about affirmations. In, in the book, you talk about how important it is to heal our thoughts and that, and that what we think um, colors our experiences. So, Linda, let's start with you. You think of affirmations in a little bit of a different way than we're used to hearing. What do you mean when you talk about affirmations? Yes, I believe affirmations that are the most helpful to us are affirmations of the greatest truth that I can 
connect with right here and now. Um, an affirmation is not a, a good luck charm. It's not a set of ma- it's not a magic potion. It's not it's not magical thinking in any way, and it's not denial of what's going on with me. But it's finding what is true right here and now, even in the middle of this condition. And as I anchor that truth, I find that I have great internal power to be able to to be able to alter the way I'm understanding what's going on with me. And it, it, it allow, it, it's a freedom. It, it creates a freedom in me to be able to see um, what comes next. And that's different from a different kind of affirmation that instead of creating freedom, creates awareness of how you didn't do it right, or you're not there yet, or it will never happen to you, or other people get it and you don't. Yes. You're talking about affirmations that open doors. Mm. Yes, and an affirmation ha- has to uh, resonate. It has to be believable to me. If I don't believe it, I am arguing against it in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, I People who listen to the show have heard me talk before about sarcastic affirmations. Yeah. I am now a millionaire. <laughs> I am now a millionaire. I am exactly. one. I believe it. Infinitely wealthy. That's me. Um, and those, those cut you. They slam doors closed instead of opening them. And so I love that idea that if, if I don't believe, and this is true in healing too, I think in general, if we don't believe it, right. If, if we're trying to sell ourselves a bill of goods, if something in us says, no, not this, this isn't right. This isn't mine. This isn't in uh, like in alignment. It's not going to work. Absolutely. It's certainly been my experience. Mm. Alicia, have you got a favorite affirmation? The book's chock full of them. I do. Well, this one is, I'm going to share from one of our favorite chapters in this book was one that we detailed. We worked with the claiming of our capacities, which we refer to as the 12 powers in unity. And you can learn a little bit more of that in my mom's uh, second book. But um, I'm going to share this one for the affirmation for will, because it's pretty important to me. I love this one. Whether or not I notice in any moment, I am a choice maker. By the self-determining power of will, I choose my attitude and outlook. I choose how to respond to the demand of any moment's circumstances. I declare with the full force of will, I am not helpless. I never have been. I choose the path ahead. Will it be joyful or stressful, easy or hard? Choosing as best I can each day, I am committed to great demonstrations of well-being that are possible for me. On days when it seems too hard, too daunting to choose well-being, on those days, I am willing. That's that's beautiful. Those, those words ring true in a way that the sarcastic affirmations never can. Did you guys write those? That's all my mom, but I, them. I yeah, I hold, yeah, they're powerful. <laughs> wow. How long have you been writing affirmations, Linda? Well, I've been a writer most of my life, but in Unity, like my first book on how to pray without talking to God was published a decade ago now, uh, September t- uh, 2001. So um, I've been I've been a Unity minister for, oh, like almost 20 years now. So I've been steeped in these teachings. And, you know, like so many, I had been introduced to affirmations as you sort of describe them as some... You know, it's it's there's a there's a joke in Unity that says there's a Unity person who's in hell and standing there and saying, "It's not hot and I'm not here." <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like total total stick your head in the sand and pretend you know that everything's wonderful, and it never felt right for me. And so I just began to write my own. So I've been writing them for a long time, and to me, they have to be real. They have to connect with what's my human condition and conditioning and how can I become more intentional 
um, in knowing what is the power that I have right now. So to me, that's what an affirmation can do. That's beautiful. And Alicia, I know that you identify as an empath and I'm wondering if you can say something about how using affirmations, using intentional practices, using like your own healing, how you've learned to set healthy, energetic and emotional boundaries. And if there's something you can share with the listeners, a lot of us, this is a, a terrible time to be an empath and especially difficult time to be an empath. Can you share something about boundaries that might help us? It sure is a terrible time to be an empath. <laughs> That's not helpful at all. Um, I, I I suggested, I joked at the beginning of, of quarantine that I just wanted to, to get a bunker and take all of my empath friends and, and protect us all. But um, honestly, I I had to work really hard to acknowledge that I had unhealthy boundaries because it, it is hard to separate yourself when you are naturally led to feel what others are feeling. But I recognized that the illness that was in my body, a lot of what I was carrying was not mine. And that was a hard pill to swallow for me. So one of the, the best things that we can do to sort of protect ourselves from that is to be really intentional with the community that we keep. Make sure that the people you're letting into your space feel safe for you, but also that you can stay present in communicating with people. But when you come back, one of the first things I do now when I leave my home is I come home and I shower and it's just like this reset, but I also feel like it kind of gets the energy of other people off of me. And, and for some reason that's, that's really worked for me. Um, I don't know, but my, my boundaries just feel, I can't explain it. It just feels different now than what it used to be. I used to feel very muddled <laughs> with everybody else's energies. Yes. Yes. I can attest to that. From yes. As an, observer, as an observer of that, yes. I can see, um, you, you know, uh, uh, Alicia, you're, you're, you, you'd liked really, it was so important to you to be accepted and acceptable that, you know, you gave so much, you gave too much, you know what I mean? You, you, you acquiesced so much. And right. uh, I have just really loved observing the growth of your assertiveness and your ability to be a self-determining being to say yes, clearly or no, clearly. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been, it's been wonderful to see that. And for me, and it's healing for me because, you know, the worry about you as your mom, <laughs> Ooh, I, I have yeah. been able to really just drop all that because you are highly capable of managing this for yourself. Right. Right. Yeah, it feels I, I, it feels like a brand new person, um, and I remember one of the coolest things that happened that really solidified for that that for me the energy was actually my my grandmother's funeral, and it was a long line of people coming through, which would have completely just overwhelmed me in the past, and people were coming and touching my hand. And everyone that came through kept saying, you're so warm, you're so warm, because the building was freezing. And I noticed that I was taking everyone's energy and holding it, but I wasn't bringing it into my person. But I felt so grounded, so calm. And I said, whoa, I've got this. I, I'm in control now. Wow. Now, I know we're right up against the clock here. I, I'd love to give you a chance to let the listeners know where they can connect with you, what they'll find on your website, and where they can get their hands on this book. Wonderful. Well, of course, the book, all the major booksellers have the book available on Amazon, for instance. You can get the book in print, on an e-reader, and also in Audible. So um, it's out in many forms. Uh, it's also Barnes & Nobles and, um, you know, independent booksellers. Um, of course, my website, you can connect with all of my different writings and uh, my coaching practice. But um, 
you know, and Alicia and I both have Facebook presidents, presences and YouTube. Alicia, you want to say more about that? Yeah, I, I have my um, YouTube channel. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and they're all just my name, a pretty, pretty unique name. So <laughs> we're easy to find on there. Yes. That's excellent. And it sounds like the website for the book is ur-divine.com. Is that right? Yes, that's my my you are divine website. That's sort of my business name. Uh-huh. Okay, love yes. it. And and I also say, you know, we really envisioned this book for uh that could be very useful for support groups, for recovering groups, for study groups of all kinds. Um because this doing this work with companions can really help. Well, and it's so darn practical. It's not a book you uh, you sit with it and you ponder it because it resonates and you let it seep in, but you don't ponder it and then go to sleep and get up and do something else. This is a book that you sit with and you let it settle and then you get up and do something. Mm. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Um, thank you both so much for being on the show. We just, we hardly scratched the surface and I appreciate you mm. coming to talk to me. Thank you. Well, we're very grateful for the chance to be with you today and with your listeners. Thank you very much. That is the Reverend Linda Martella Whitsett and Alicia Whitsett. They're co-authors of the new book, This Life is Yours. Discover your power, claim your wholeness, and heal your life. You can find out more about Linda and Alicia and their work at the letter U, the letter R, hyphen divine, U R hyphen divine dot com. You can also find Alicia and Linda on YouTube and on Facebook. Use their unique names, Linda Martella Witz at Alicia Witz at to find them there. And of course, you're always welcome over at KarenHager.com. That's a great place to find out what's coming up on this radio show, learn about upcoming classes and events. You can even book a private session with me there if you are so inclined. I love helping people see the light of their own presence. I love helping you look into what more is open to you on the path. How might you connect more deeply with spirit? What is there behind that door you maybe wondered if you should open that you can find that enhances your path? All that's at karenhager.com. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Fog City Psychic on Facebook and Instagram, and I've started putting these episodes up on YouTube. And you can find me on YouTube just by putting in Karen Hager into the search engine. My smiling face will pop right up. Join me once a month, the first Sunday of every month for Opening the Peaceful Heart, a call for love. That's a free 15-minute guided meditation. That's open to you no matter where you are in the world. Join us then for 15 minutes where we focus on peace. No selling, no yelling, no politics, just peace. Get details and sign up for reminders about those free calls at openpeacefulheart.com. And thank you for listening today. Together we are spreading a little more light in the world and a little more light is always a good thing. Until next time, I'm wishing you peace. Peace.